So now we will solve problems based on inverse images, finding the inverse images. So I will take let f be a function from r plus. What is r plus? r plus means all positive real numbers to real numbers. And that function is defined by f of x is equal to log x to the base 10. This is the function that I'm defining. I'm writing the set A. Let A, capital A, be the set closed interval 1 to 2. And capital B set, I'm writing closed interval 2 to 3. OK? And we are going to find the following things. So I will say find first one is f inverse of 1. Second, f inverse 2. Third, f inverse a. A is what is A? A is the close interval 1, 2. Fourth, F inverse B. Fifth, F inverse A intersection B. Sixth, F inverse A intersection B. F inverse B. F inverse A intersection F inverse B. These six things we are going to solve now. Okay. Now you can see that this function is defined on the set of R plus. So the domain of the function is set of all positive real numbers. And the codomain of the function is set of all real numbers. So when I'm going to draw the graph of this particular function, I'm only going to draw the positive x-axis because x-axis means the domain. Only I'm going to draw the positive x-axis. All of us know that we can find logarithm of only positive numbers. We cannot find the logarithm of negative numbers. Okay. We cannot find the real logarithm of negative real numbers. The logarithm can only be found for positive real numbers. You cannot even find what is the logarithm of zero. Okay, log of zero also does not exist, right? So that we have to keep in mind when I'm drawing the graph. I will only draw the positive real axis. Okay. Secondly, now how are we going to draw this particular graph? Okay, let us prepare a small table. The table that I'm going to prepare is x and y, which is log x to the base 10. The values of x that I'm going to allow are only positive values, right? So what values of x I will assume? I will assume simple values of x, which will help me in calculation. So I will take the value of x first to be 1. Then I will take the value of f of x is 10. Then I will directly take 100 and I will take 1000 because these are very easy values. All of us know what is log 1. All of us know what is log 10. Log 100 also we know and, and log 1000 also is known to us, right? Log 1 is how much? Log 1 to the base 10 is 0. What is log of 10 to the base 10? Log 10 to the base 10 is 1. Log 100 to the base 10 we know is equal to 2 because you can write it as log of 10 square. Right? Log of 100 can be written as log of 10 square and this becomes 2 times log 10 to the base log 10 which is 1. So it is 2 into 1 will be 2 and log 1000 is how much? Log 1000 is 3. Okay? Now the this table 
will help me to draw the graph of the logarithm function. So when I'm drawing the graph of the logarithm function, I know that I have to draw the y-axis. Y-axis means the codomain, which is the complete real line. Okay. And x-axis, I will not draw completely because logarithm function for negative numbers, I'm not going to define. So I'm going to keep it dot, dot, dot. And positive real axis, I'm going to keep it as it is. So this is your R plus. This is your R plus. On this real line, I'm going to draw the numbers. What are the values of X? The values of X are 1. Then scale I'm changing. I'm taking 10 here. Taking 100, assuming that the 100 is here. And here I have 1000. On the Y axis, I'm having 1. two, three, and so on. So the first point on the graph is x comma y. What is x and x comma y? What is the first coordinate? One comma zero, because x is one, y is zero, right? So that point is here. On the x axis, one comma zero. Second point is 10 comma 1. 10 comma 1 is in the first quadrant. I'm making that point now dark. 10 comma 1. Third point is 100 comma 2. Fourth point is 1000 comma 3. You can see the dots on the graph paper. And I will draw the picture of the log function using these dots. We have already seen how to draw the graph of a logarithm function using GeoGebra also. You will see that the graph tends to minus infinity as x goes near and near to zero. So it is decreasing. It drops down. And in the first quadrant, it is a very slow increasing function you can see in the picture now okay so this is how the logarithm graph completely looks like. Now we will solve the first part. The first part of the question is what is F inverse of one? So now when you are finding the inverse images, you have to go take the points on the Y axis. Then you have to pull back on the graph and come down. OK. When we were solving problems on images, what we did, we took the sets in the x axis, we projected them on the graph, and then we again projected them on the y axis. This is done in the le lecture for finding images. When you're doing free images, we are going to do the opposite process. We're going to take up the, the sets on the y axis, then we will project them on the graph, and then we will come back to the x axis. So the first part is F inverse of one okay what is f inverse of one now this one i am supposed to take on what this one i am supposed to take on the y-axis okay one is here on the y-axis i'm zooming the graph now for you people so here is your one i will go back to the graph And I will drop down.
So what is F inverse 1? F inverse 1 is 10. If I want to find F inverse of 2, second part, F inverse of 2 will be how much? I will go at 2 on the y axis get to the graph and drop down f inverse 2 is 100. What is f inverse of a? What is f inverse of a? Now what is a? If you remember what is a? a is equal to the closed interval 1, 2. Now where should I take this closed interval? Since I'm dealing with the inverse images, this closed interval I will take on the y axis. So I will show that now on the y axis I'm shading the interval, interval 1 to 2, closed interval 1 to 2. I will pull back all the points on the graph. and drop them down on the x-axis so that I will get this interval that interval is how much 10 to 100 so the answer for f inverse a is the interval 10 to 100 okay the fourth part is f inverse of b now i hope you can clearly understand what is f inverse b the set b that we have used was closed interval 2 to 3 so what is the inverse image of this interval 2 to 3 on the y-axis? So this is your B and this is your A, okay? Giving the picture a little bit. B is an interval from 2 to 3. And I have to find the inverse image of the interval 2 to 3. What will be the inverse image of the interval 2 to 3 under this function? It is clear that the answer will be how much? The answer will be 1000, 100 to 1000. So this will be your F inverse B and this will be your F inverse A. Do you see that? So F inverse B will be closed interval. 100 to 1000. So I will write it down in my book now. F inverse B is closed interval 100 to 1000. Okay. The fifth part is what is F inverse of A intersection B? What is F inverse of A intersection B? If you carefully look at this A and B that I have written here in the third quadrant, you can see the intervals written here. A is 1, 2 and B is 2, 3. What is common between A and B? So the point which is common between A and B is singleton 2. So 2 is common between the interval 1, 2 and 2, 3. So here I will write F inverse of 2. And what is F inverse of 2? F inverse of 2, we have already calculated F inverse 2 is equal to how much? 100. So, answer for the fifth one is 100. For the sixth part, F inverse A intersection F inverse B. This we want to find what is F inverse A and what is F inverse B. We have already found out both of them. F inverse A is 100, 10 to 100, intersection, closed interval 100 to 
1000 what is common between both these intervals only the number 100 is common between both the numbers so this is actually singleton set let me write here singleton set okay okay so now in the next problem we will solve is f is a function from r to r and i'm going to define f of x equal to x cube and a is the closed interval 1 to 8 and b is the closed interval 0 1 and we are going to find these inverse images uh, of the given function so let me first draw the graph of the function uh, f of x equal to x cube so i'm drawing the x axis now so the x axis is the domain okay which is the real line okay and the codomain is also real line so this is r and we all know that the fun the graph of the function x cube uh, we have drawn you the, uh, we have already done this using geogebra so the graph turns out to be graph which which is in the first and the third quadrant okay and it is one cube is one and two cube is eight so eight. so two cube is eight so two into comma eight is the next point the next point is minus one goes to minus one because minus one cube is again minus one and minus two cube is minus eight okay which i will not draw so because i don't have that space so the graph passes through these points it's a smooth curve and zero cube is zero so it also passes through zero zero so this is how the function actually looks so this is the graph of f of x equal to x cube Okay. Now we will try to find what are the pre images of the given sets. So the first interval A that is given to us 1 to 8. Since we are finding the pre image, this interval A 1 to 8 is on the y axis. So I will draw on the y axis. So I will draw that interval 1 to 8 on the y axis. I will project it on the function to find the inverse. I have to come back. On the X axis. So this is a. And the inverse image that we got is 1 to 2 close interval 1 to 2 okay that is your f of f inverse a this is f inverse a okay so here i clearly see that f inverse a the answer for the first question f inverse a is 1 to 2 and the set b is 0 to 1 set b 0 to 1 which is here its inverse image zoom a little bit its inverse image is this so this this set is f inverse b what is that set that set is closed interval 0 1 okay so we got f inverse a and we got f inverse b both right so let me write f inverse b in as the answer so the second answer is f inverse b is closed interval 0 1 okay third one is finding f inverse of a union b okay if you want to find f inverse of a union b 
first we will find what is a union b and then we will take the inverse image so what is a union b a is a is 1 to 8 and b is 0 to 1 so what is complete a union b a union b will be the closed interval so a union b will be the uh, cl closed interval 0 to 1 0 to 8 sorry and what is the inverse image of 0 to 8 it will be 0 to 2 okay and the third and the fourth part is f inverse a union f inverse b which is clear that f inverse a is closed interval 1 2 and union f inverse b is closed interval 0 1 so what is the union of these two intervals on the x-axis you can see that close close interval 0 1 and close interval 1, 1 2 when they combine together that will form close interval 0 to 2 so you see that these two answers are coming the same because we know from the above theorem that f inverse a union b will always be equal to f inverse a union f inverse b okay and in the above problem that we have solved for log x to the base 10 there we calculated f inverse a intersection b and we also calculate uh, calculated f inverse a intersection f inverse b both the answers came to be same that, that is singleton 100 okay so because we have proved a theorem that f inverse a intersection b will always be equal to f inverse a intersection f inverse b so we have verified that the theorem is actually correct okay we have applied those theorems and we have checked actually whether those theorems are correct or not okay